Hi, everybody. It's Pastor Jerry, and I am so excited to be able to bring to you this message this Sunday morning. It's a little different. It's a little weird for me. I was trying to uh, preach uh, in the pulpit out in the sanctuary, and it was just a a little, it just threw me off uh, seeing just an empty congregation. And so I'm here in the office in the church and uh, recording this for you to have this message. Uh, One of the things that I've been thinking about here this past week since they gave the the uh, shutdown and and for us to have to quarantine ourselves or to lock ourselves down into our homes for safety and and just to do our part in stopping the spread of this virus that is going around. I was thinking about two things. One, the gospel can never be locked down. The gospel can never be quarantined. 
And number two, I was thinking about the Apostle Paul in some of his letters when he wrote to the church in Rome and when he wrote to the church in Colossae and, and when he was in Philippi, he, he talked about how much he he just hoped and he wanted to be able to see the churches there and to be able to visit them and get to see who they are. And, and I started thinking about, man, if, if Paul only had the technology that we had today, how excited he would be. Uh, it would be horrible if we were shut down and, and locked down and hunkered down in our homes and, and never be able to see each other for the next couple of weeks, never couple, next couple of months. We don't know how long this virus is going to last. And so uh, we're grateful and thankful to God that we have this technology to be able to bring the message of God's word uh, to you. I also want to just encourage you as you're watching this video to hit the subscribe button on this YouTube page. Once you subscribe, when I upload a video, uh, you'll get a notification that I have something there. So you'll be fully communicated of what's happening in the life of the church. Another thing that are happening in the life of the church is on the 28th, uh, as of right now, uh, food ministry is canceled. But we're hoping that we can uh, uh, have it because it is an essential that the state governor uh, has issued. So giving out food and, and stuff like that is an essential uh, participation uh, event. And so we're going to work on some ways where we can keep ourselves safe and keep the community safe so that we can distribute food. So I'm hoping and praying that, uh, and I'm going to ask you to pray that that would happen on uh, the 28th of this month. And so, but we'll let you know more exactly how we're doing it. So keep us in prayer in that. So let's go ahead and just get into the word of God. And I want to just start first and, and start out with prayer. So would you just bow your heads and just close your eyes and just take all distractions that are around your home or wherever that you are at, just take them all away. And let's just focus on the glory of God and how he sits on his throne and is sovereign over all things. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we just come before you and just praise you and thank you. And I ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would be with all of our church family and those that are our guests that are visiting us online for the first time, Father, that they'll be able to see that we love you, that we love each other, we love your word. And Father, we just want to honor you and we want to hear from you today. We want to hear from you, from your word. By the power of your spirit, Father, that it would just transform the way we live and the way we look at our lives. Father, the way we look at death, the way we look at pandemics, the way we look at tragedy, Father, that we would seek you and that we would look towards you. And so, Father, I pray for every family that is watching online, Father, that you'll fill them with your spirit. Father, speak to them, Father, today. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for all that you are and all that you do. And like I always like to say, and the church said, amen. So we're continuing our series called Lent. And so many of you uh, celebrate Lent or participate in Lent. And, and it was asked of me today is what does Lent mean? And Lent means to lengthen. It's a lengthen of time uh, where people normally celebrate or sacrifice something for 40 days to symbolize and commemorate the time when Jesus was in the wilderness being tempted by Satan uh, for 40 days where he didn't eat and he didn't drink. And so, and he was tempted. And so those are some of the things that, that people, uh, you know, observe this Lent period. But one of the things that I want to do with this series is just see how we can not only, uh, be part of Lent, but we have to remember. Lent is about remembrance. And I shared that with you last week, remembering who we are, uh, as mortal beings and who God is as immortal and eternal. But not only that, think about our life and think about our death and remember the things that we uh, are called to do. And so I just want to encourage you to remember, we're going to continue this series about remembering, you know, with, with all the problems that we have in life, we, we often find ourselves, you know, helpless it seems like right now during this period of time, we're, we're finding ourselves kind of helpless. And, and I hope and pray that we don't find ourselves hopeless. But that's what happens when things like this happen in our world. People are, are helpless and they're hopeless. And so it's natural for us to want to gain some sort of control in our lives. And so you see the, the shopping that's taking place and the people hoarding all the food and the shelves that are, uh, that are no longer stocked. They're all empty and things like that. And it, we start to feel vulnerable, like we're, we don't have control of our lives. And, 
And that's the truth of the matter, is that God wants to show us that we don't have control of our lives. And so we need to seek him and remember him that he is ultimately in control. And when we do that and we go to God in our helpless state, he is always there to help us. God pays attention to his creation. That's one of the great things that we can think about in scripture when we look at is that when we read what we're going to look at in Psalms, Uh, 121, we're going to see that God pays attention to his creation. God hears your cries and, and he's promised us through Jesus to deliver us. Especially, especially during these times of difficulty, during these times where we can trust God and we need to trust God that he hears your prayers. And not only that, that he hears your prayers and he's going to deliver his people. And so if you turn your Bibles, we're going to turn to Psalm 121. And I'm going to read out of the English Standard Version because I really like this translation. Where the psalmist talks about seeking God in in maybe a time of trouble. And listen to what, starting with verse 1, going to uh, verse 8 of chapter 121. And I hope you have your Bibles there. Listen to what it says. He says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, there's that word behold that I talked during Christmas. Pay attention. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. If you notice in this chapter 121 of the Psalms, the psalmist starts with a question. And a lot of times we, when things like this happen in our lives, we start out with these questions like, what is happening? Or why is this happening? Or when is this going to end? Or is this going to affect me? And, and the, the psalmist starts with the question. And, the, and these, this is a question that we need to ask ourselves. Is where are we going when we feel helpless? Now, Jerusalem, in this context, Jerusalem is surrounded by mountains. And they're often described by the, by the Israelites, holy hills. Where people go to, to uh, like a sanctuary to go and speak to God and go to hear from God and go to be in the presence of God. And so a lot of times they're called holy hills. And so that's why the psalmist says, where should I look? Where do I go? Where do I see? Where does my help come from? And notice it says that he lifts up his eyes. We need to lift up our eyes. We need to lift up our hearts and seek the will of God and his power and his control. You know, sometimes our problems seem like mountains. They seem like mountains of challenges that are facing us each and every day. Sometimes we feel like we're in this valley and, and we're not sure what to do or, or what to say or where to go. You know, a lot of times we, we go to the news or we go to friends and family. But how about looking up to God, looking up to God and crying out to him? And see, and see the promises that God has and how the psalmist understands and he knows and he has faith and he has trust that God will hear his voice. God will hear you and he will take care of you. You see, one of the things that this psalmist shows us today out of reading this passage is that we can cry out to God with confidence. We can cry out to God with confidence. That the creator God, the creator of the heavens and earth, who made all that we see, is our helper and our keeper. And so one of the great things that I want to just share with you is point number one, is that Lent, or during these times of problems, or whatever the case that you may be going through, it should remind us of God's comfort and his consolation. That's what this whole passage is about, is God's comfort and his consolation. I will lift up my eyes. Where does my help come from? So right away, the psalmist knows and understands that where he's going to go to help, and he's going to go to God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And then the second thing that I want to share with you today is that Lent or your problems or whatever it is that's going on, it it reminds us of God's invariable vigilance. 
his invariable vigilance. Listen to what verse 3 and 4 says. He says, he will not let your foot slip. Now, that's one of the last things that you want. If you were to climb a mountain, the last thing you want is your foot to slip. And so it says here that God will not let your foot slip. You will not stumble. God stabilizes you. He stabilizes your foundation. He stabilizes your ground. He stabilizes your faith. It says that he who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel. So not only is it just you that he's watching, but it's the whole people of Israel. It's the whole church that he's watching. He says, indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. God is the one that is going to hold you up. And notice it says that he doesn't sleep. Why? Because he's watching you. You know, it reminds me when I was, when my kids were little and they were babies, I used to stay up uh, late at night and just watch my kids sleep. And I think about that sometimes how God is, is that God is staying awake, just watching over us. God never gets tired. He never quits. He never allows anything to, to stop him from doing what he is, what he wants to do. And what he desires to do with his people is watch over us and take care of us and keep us. And so that's something that brings me comfort. And I hope and pray that it gives you comfort. You know, us as mortal beings, our bodies get tired. No matter how, more, how much you try to push hard and, and to continue to push through and fight through, your body can only endure so much. But God never gets tired. God never gets to a point to where he just wants to give up. He's always, always vigilant in watching over you and watching his people. You see, because God created everything, and because he created everything, there's nothing on this earth, no experience, no problem that you're going to encounter that's outside of the scope of God's knowledge and of God's help. No matter who may fail you or, or let you down, when this life, when you're trying to figure life out and you're trying to figure out what's the best course of action, God will always know what to say and what to do when it comes to your life and when it comes to your problems. So so let that be a reminder of God's invariable vigilance. God is so vigilant with us. And number three is this. God reminds us, Lent reminds us of God's promise of protection. Now that brings great comfort and consolation to me is that God, even with this virus and, and things that are going on, God is protecting me. Now, one thing that I want to just share with you is that God is, is not just, he's going to protect your spirit. He's going to protect your soul. Now, it's, it's common sense to understand that, that things around this world can affect us. We can get affected with this virus. We can get in a car accident. We, we can get cancer or all kinds of things that can happen to us. But what this psalmist is talking about is our spirit. He says in verse 5, he says, the Lord watches over you. The Lord is at your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. Now the psalmist when he says this is that when you're climbing these mountains, when you're going to the holy hills, when you're traveling, the sun is beating down on them. And so he's using this as an analogy that the sun cannot damage him during the day nor the light of the moon by night. God is always there giving us shade in our lives. God is actively keeping you in his protection. Now the word keeper here in this passage is, is the Hebrew word shamar. And what's great about this word is that it shows up the, for the first time in Genesis 2.15 where God created Adam and Eve and he placed them in the garden uh, of Eden. And he gave this command, this command is to keep the garden. You are to have it dwell in this garden and you're to keep it. And so they're to work the garden and maintain it. And that's what this psalmist is saying. If the Lord keeps you like Adam and Eve, uh, we're supposed to keep the garden of Eden. Then that means that, that, that God is going to be moving all around you. He's going to be keeping you. He's going to be working you. And, and if you guys know in a garden, you can't just plant the seed and just hope that something comes up. No, you have to cultivate the ground. You got to clean the ground. You got to water it. You got to check it. You got to move the soil around it. And when something starts to grow, you begin to work the ground around it. So that's the things that you have to do. And that's what God does in our lives when he keeps us. 
God maybe has to turn things around. Maybe he has to turn things upside down, looking for fruit or maybe pulling some weeds in our life, taking things out, pruning some growth uh, in our lives, pruning some things that are not supposed to be there so that we can grow. And, and, and that's how God keeps us. God just doesn't simply keep bad things from happiness. That's not what this passage is saying. And that's not what Lent is about in, in, in looking at God's promise of protection. It's the fact that God is more interested about our spiritual well-being because that's what's going to be eternal. Our physical bodies are going to leave this earth. It may be a few days from now. It may be a month from now, a year from now. We don't know. But the truth of the matter is that only through faith in Jesus Christ, by trusting and believing in him, that he suffered and died on a cross for you, because of your sins, the sins that you've committed towards a holy and righteous God. God has planned and gave us Jesus, his only begotten son, to suffer and die on a cross. And the Bible says, his word says that if you believe in him, you trust him, you place your faith in him, you start to follow him, and you seek him, and you look to him, and you love him with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, with everything that you have, and love your neighbor as yourself. God says, if you believe that he suffered and died on a cross, and that he was buried on the third day, he was raised from the dead, Paul says this in Romans, you will be saved. And so I want to encourage you that the spiritual protection that God has already given us is his son Jesus. And that blood that was shed on the cross covers us, seals us, The Holy Spirit seals our souls. Our names are written in the book of life. It is a done deal in God's eyes. And so because of that, God has saved us. We want to follow him. We want to love him. And God wants our spiritual well-being to be more intact than our physical well-being. Now, yes, we want to be healthy. We want to take care of ourselves. And I encourage you to be part of this lockdown, so to say, because we don't want to get other people sick. And so we want to make sure that we're healthy, that we're strong. But we, God wants to make sure that our faith is strong. We don't want bad things to happen to us. But God wants us to learn from these things and how we are to live our lives and, and be part of what he is doing during these storms in our life. You know, there's a song that is sung, uh, I, I praise you in this storm by casting crowns. And that's one of the things that we have to continue to do as a church body, as a family, is we need to continue to praise God. I was thinking this morning, the other day, uh, this morning, I was thinking that just how blessed we are to be able to s- sleep in our beds and, and wake up in the morning and, and be able to make breakfast and things like that, have our coffee or whatever it is that we do, have our routine. You know, our lives are just temporarily interrupted or maybe they'll be interrupted for a long time we don't know but we still praise God through this storm and so I want to encourage you to continue to praise him praise him we pour out our praise like the song that we just heard we pour out our praise it's the the breath in our lungs that we are going to wake up and 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 breathe out is the praises to God and so I want to encourage you as we are uh, about to finish up this this message here today is that you give your life to Jesus. It's the best thing that you can do. If you're seeking answers, if you're seeking truth, if you're wondering what things are going on, I want to encourage you to just open up your Bibles and and read God's word and allow God to speak to you. You pray and ask God for forgiveness. And so I'm going to lead you in a prayer that we do every Sunday, and I want to continue to do it. Even though we're not meeting here in the church building, we're meeting together online, in our homes, in our small groups, whatever it is that we have to do. And I still want to give this opportunity where you can pray and talk to God and ask for forgiveness and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So right now, if everybody would just bow their heads and just close their eyes and just focus on God and just thank God. Thank Him for His protection. Thank Him for His comfort, for His consolation. Thank Him for for the life that He's given us. Thank Him for His vigilance, that He's always watching over us. And if today you're thinking about just giving your life to Jesus, that you've admitted that you know you've sinned against God, then I'm going to ask you to just pray this prayer. Dear, Dear God, I know I am a sinner. 
And I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus is your son and that he suffered and died on a cross, that he was buried and that he rose from the dead. And I give my faith in him for forgiveness. And not only that, Father, I give you my life. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for saving me. And I love you. Help me to grow and to do your will. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, it's nothing special. It's just you talking to God deep down in your heart. If you prayed that and you believe it in your heart, then the Bible says that you are saved. Now, that's exciting. That is great news. That is something that, that needs to be celebrated. And, and it's unfortunate that, that we uh, can't celebrate with you every, uh, here together in the church building. But one thing that we can do is if you look at the bottom, there is comments. And you please comment. Not only hit subscribe, but comment on there. and Let me know uh, what your decision is. Maybe there's some prayer concern that you need in your life, and your family, or maybe you have some questions about what I just spoke about. And so would you please put it on the comments? And so I, I thank you so much. I'm so excited about what God is doing. I also want to encourage you, those of you who are members of this church, to uh, continue to give. Uh, there's a lot of churches that are struggling. Uh, there's churches that are, are not as well off as we are. And so we want to be able to just see God move in a mighty way. And so if you go to our website at www.blvdcc.com and go to the giving section and just continue to click until it takes you to the page, you can go online and it's safe and you can go online and you can give and it goes straight into the church's bank account. Nobody has to go to the bank. It's amazing the technology that we can do, that we could continue to give. And if you don't want to uh, give online, then I encourage you to go to our website. You'll see our P.O. box, and you can uh, write a check and mail it to us, and we will get it, and we will be able to uh, distribute those funds to continue to do the ministry that this church has, has called us to do, that, this, that God has called this church to do. So I'm so excited again to be able to record this. Uh, this is my first time doing this, and, and I hope and pray that, that God is uh, blessing you, that God is keeping you. And that God is watching over you and because I know he is because that's what his word says. And so let me pray for all of you and then we'll conclude uh, this message. Our Heavenly Father, we just come before you again. And thank you so much that as I look into this camera, Father, I can, I can see my family. I can see the people that you've placed in my, in my flock, the people that you've placed in my church, in my fellowship. And I just thank you, Father. I'm so honored and blessed to be able to have this technology to to get into your word and to worship you. I thank you so much for watching over us, for Father, for your uh, vigilance and, and, Father, for your protection, for your comfort and your consolation. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll be with everybody that's at home, that you keep them well, and, Father, that you'll continue to provide. And I pray, Father, continue as we're all in one accord that this coronavirus will go away, Father, soon. And that your son Jesus comes soon. Father, we love you. And again, we thank you. And we praise you for, for just loving us. And Father, we love you too. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. And everyone said, Amen. Have a great week, everybody. I love you.